the market risk premium. Our model says that the expected return on a risky asset is equal to the risk-free rate plus a risk premium that compensates the investor for the risk of the investment. Let's suppose we invest in the market itself, or rather in a portfolio of securities that is representative of the market. From our model, the expected return on the market is equal to the risk-free rate plus a market risk premium. Let's solve the market risk premium. Where the market risk premium is equal to the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Our model is for expected returns, so it's an expectational model because the financial markets are forward-looking and prices are based on the market's expectations for the future. So our market risk premium is an expected market risk premium. It's the market risk premium that's expected over a future period of time. Now unfortunately we can't directly measure the market's expectation for the market risk premium. In practice we use averages taken from historical data and the average historical market risk premium is used as a proxy for the expected future market risk premium. And keep in mind that when you're using the past to predict the future, you're assuming the future is going to be exactly like the past. So we're assuming that the past period over which we are calculating our averages is representative of the future. So what's a good estimate for the market risk premium? Let's estimate a market risk premium using our market data for the period 1926 to 2008. We proxy the market with a portfolio of large company stocks. Its mean return is 11.7%. We proxy the risk-free rate with yields on the three-month Treasury bill. United States Treasury bills are practically default risk-free, and because of their short maturities, they have negligible interest rate risk. Our estimate of the market risk premium based on the investment period's historical averages is 7.9 percent. As we use a portfolio of common stock to proxy for the market portfolio, this is also called an equity risk premium. We can use the average inflation rate of 3.1 percent and calculate a real market risk premium of 4.65 percent. This represents a 4.65 percent real increase in purchasing power. These are healthy percentages, but is 7.9% a good estimate for the market risk premium? Economists looking at longer historical periods suggest that the 1926 to 2008 period is unrepresentative and produces an average that is too high given the longer historical experience. The market risk premiums over earlier periods are much lower. The risk premium estimated over longer periods also gives lower averages. The average market risk premium over the period 1802 to 2008 is 5.2%. This study calculated average market risk premiums over a long period from 1900 to 2005 across 17 countries. The market risk premium for the United States was 7.4 percent and falls in the middle internationally. The average across countries is 7.1 percent. Let's see where we stand. The average market risk premium over the period 1802 to 2008 was 5.2 percent. The average market risk premium over the period 1926 to 2008 was 7.9 percent. The average market risk premium over the period 1900 to 2005 was 7.4 percent. The average market risk premium for 17 countries over the period 1900 to 2005 was 7.1 percent. A survey of 256 financial market economists on their opinions regarding the future expected market risk premium 
produced a medium response of 7%. A 95% confidence interval calculated from the 1900 to 2005 data for the United States produces a range of 5.5% to 9.3% for the market risk premium over that time period. So the evidence on this slide suggests an estimate for the market risk premium of about 7%. But we should keep in mind that in using historical averages as proxies for the future market risk premium, we are always assuming that the past is representative of the future.